let us now see how to calculate some of the important parameters related to projectile. Let us first calculate the time of flight. So again, the usual convention, the same analysis, what we have to do in the projectile that we have to resolve the velocity, initial velocity. Let us try to do all the basic things. Initial velocity along the x-axis is u cos theta and the initial velocity along the y-axis is how much? u sine theta. And then velocity at the highest point is by drawing, it's obtained by drawing a tangent to the path and that is nothing but u cos theta. That is nothing but the velocity along the x-axis, along the y-axis. The velocity is nothing but how much? Velocity is nothing but zero because tangent is purely horizontal. It will have only horizontal component. There is no vertical component. Now, let me divide uh, the path into two and then do the problem. This is a rise and this is fall. This is ascent and this is descent. I'm dividing into two parts. One is a rise and this is fall. Rise is also called ascent and fall is called as descent. Let me mark this O and let me mark this as A and let me mark this as B. I am writing the equations from O to A. What all you know from O to A, let us write it. Obviously, you have to know what is that you are writing along the x-axis and what is that you're writing along the y-axis. Let us try to write what all we know along the y-axis. Okay, what all we know along the y-axis. So what all do we know along the y-axis? We know the initial velocity. We know the initial velocity along the y-axis. That is u sine theta upward. Upward vectors, we take it as positive. Downward vectors, we take it as negative. And then the velocity at the highest point, I'm applying from O to A. From O to A, I'm applying. So A will be the final point and uh, O will be the initial point. So what is the velocity at the final point? Along the y-axis, it is nothing but zero. Along the y-axis, it is zero. Acceleration along the y-axis is always going to be downward, which is minus D. So with U, V, A, what I can calculate? Let me calculate time. Let me calculate time. So which equation I can use with V, U, A, T? I can use the equation V equal to U plus A, T. Simple equation I can use. V equal to U plus A, T. And I am writing it along the y-axis because I know the kinematic equations can be applied along the y-axis. So V, Y equal to U, Y plus A, Y into T. V, Y is how much? Zero. U, Y is how much? U sine theta. Acceleration along the y-axis is minus G into time. So this will become gt equal to u sine theta. So this implies that time will be equal to u sine theta by g. Time is equal to how much? u sine theta by g. But this was what time? This was the time that we have calculated if the body is moving from O to A. That is time of rise or this is time of ascent. This is what? This is time of ascent. That is nothing but rise. If air resistance is ignored, we can prove that whatever time it takes for rise, the same time will be for fall also. For rise from O to A, how much time it is taking? U sine theta by G because I have applied the equations from O to A. O to A I have applied. I have applied only for rise. So whatever time I get is for rise only. If, if air resistance is ignored, we can prove that time of rise and time of fall will be same. So time of rise time of ascent will be same as time of descent. This implies the total time, which is called as the time of flight. Time of flight means what? Time for the entire journey. Time of flight means time for the entire journey. This is called as time of flight. And that is how much that will be equal to. For rise, it is u sine theta by g. And for fall, it is u sine theta by g. So what will be the total time? u sine theta by g for rise plus u sine theta by g for fall. So it is going to be 2u sine theta divided by g. This is the total time, which is called as the time of flight. For rise, it is u sine theta by g, isn't it? For fall also, how much will it be? For fall also, it will be u sine theta by g. So total time will be addition of these two. That is going to be 2u sine theta by g. We have calculated one thing. Next, let us calculate. Let us calculate the maximum height. Let us calculate the maximum height attained by the projectile. H max. Now again, we can do the same Y analysis we can do. We can do the Y analysis. What is the maximum height? I can tell that this is the maximum height, isn't it? This is nothing but the maximum height of the body, which is attained by the projectile. Now, how do I calculate the maximum height? How do I calculate the maximum height? 
to calculate the maximum height see you were knowing what you were knowing u v a when the body moves from o to a when the body moves from o to a don't see the actual path you just to see how much displacement has been occurred along the y axis just see there carefully when the body has moved from o to a what is the displacement along the y axis this much is the displacement along the y axis isn't it along the y axis it has covered so much and along the x axis it has covered so much but i am interested in writing displacement along the y axis from o to a so the displacement is basically h max and it is in the upward direction so it is going to be positive so therefore ay is equal to minus g time we were not knowing correct and one more thing that we have to calculate is what displacement along the y axis which is in the upward direction and that is nothing but h max so which equation i will use with u v a and then yes i can use the equation v square equal to u square plus 2 a yes which equation i can use i can use v square equal to u square plus 2 a yes so it will be v y square equal to u y square plus 2 a y into s y because this equations have to be applied only along the y axis v y is 0 u y is nothing but u sin theta the whole square Plus two into acceleration along the y-axis is minus g. Displacement is nothing but h max. Minus two g h max will go this side. It becomes a uh, plus two g into h max, which is nothing but equal to u sine theta. The whole square will become u square into sine square theta. So maximum height we are going to get it as a uh, u square sine square theta divided by two g. This is my maximum height. U square sine square theta by two g. So both the equations we have got by applying the equations along the y-axis, equations of motion along the y-axis. So you have to be worried only about the y-axis. Don't worry about the whole path. Just see how much displacement has occurred along the y-axis. Okay. Then last, we are going to find out the range. What are we going to find? A range. Now, what is a range? A range is nothing but the horizontal distance the particle covers during the entire journey. in the entire journey how much distance it covered along the horizontal during the complete journey the particle has covered a distance equal to ob along the horizontal and that is only called as range that is only called as what that is only called as range range is nothing but the total distance covered along the horizontal the total distance covered along the horizontal in the entire journey for the entire journey how much distance it is covering along the horizontal that is only called as range now range is there in which direction see maximum height uh, and for time of flight we use the y analysis isn't it now we can use x analysis because range is there along the x axis as you can clearly check range is there in which direction along the x axis so let me apply the equations along x axis so along the x axis what all you know and since we have to do it for the whole journey i'm going to write the equations from o to b so from o to b what all i know along the x axis i know the velocity along the x axis which is going to be constant along the x axis because acceleration is zero along the x axis so velocity is going to be constant and i think by this time you should have remembered that the velocity is going to be how much along the x axis u cos theta and what is the displacement people from o to b correct don't see the whole path don't see the whole path you just check how much displacement has occurred in the horizontal when the particle has moved from o to b in o to b correct the displacement is equal to r what is the displacement along the x axis displacement along the x, x axis is nothing but r and therefore i'll apply this equation v equal to s by t so if i apply the equation v equal to s by t along the x axis for the previous two i applied along y now if i apply it along the x axis velocity how much i'll get velocity i'll get it as u cos theta displacement is how much what is the displacement along the x axis it is nothing but r and what will be the time because it is for the entire journey it is for the entire journey it is for the entire journey so for the entire journey we need to take the time will be corresponding to total time which is time of flight it's an entire journey no o to b it's an entire journey so the time corresponding for the entire journey is nothing but the time of flight so what will range become therefore range will become equal to u cos theta multiplied by how much multiplied by tf range is equal to u cos theta multiplied by tf let us see the simplification now we saw that range was equal to how much u cos theta multiplied by time of flight this i had obtained by uh, writing this equation v equal to s by t 
So this implies S is equal to V multiplied by T and S was the range. Velocity along the X axis was U cos theta. And since it was the entire journey, T will be the time of flight. And let us substitute the time of flight. From equation one, what was the time of flight? Time of flight was time of flight was 2u sin theta by g. 2u sin theta upon how much? 2u sin theta upon g. Now, we have a standard result in mathematics, which is sin 2 theta is equal to 2 sin theta into cos theta. 2 sin theta multiplied by cos theta. So 2 the sine theta into this cos theta will become sine 2 theta. So what will range become? u into u will become u square. Okay. And then this 2 sine theta cos theta divided by g. Now 2 sine theta cos theta is nothing but sine 2 theta. Therefore range is going to be u square sine 2 theta divided by g. This is expression for range. u square sine 2 theta divided by g. This is a formula for range. Third equation. Now, one more equation is there, which is very important related to range and maximum height, the fourth relation. So we can prove that range is equal to 4h by tan theta, where h is the maximum height and r is the range. We have this relation. We have to remember this additional relation that is r equal to 4h by tan theta. This uh, derivation is not there as such in the NCRT book. The previous derivations are there, but uh, if you remember this uh, result, it is going to be very helpful for problems. Whenever range and maximum height together are spoken in a problem, you can directly use this relation. R is equal to 4h by tan theta. Let us see the proof of this. Let us take the uh, right-hand side. What is the right-hand side? The right-hand side is a uh, 4h by tan theta. Now let us put the value of maximum height. What is the value of maximum height? This is nothing but the maximum height. H is nothing but u square sine square theta by 2g. u square sine square theta divided by 2g. And then this tan theta can be written as sine theta divided by cos theta. And then one sine, one sine will cancel. Cos will come to the numerator. 2 ones are 2 twos are. Therefore, I am getting this as uh, u square into 2. I will write here. And then one sine theta is remaining cos theta will come up. So into cos theta divided by g and this can be written as u square. Again, we have two sine theta cos theta, the standard result that is nothing but sine two theta, sine two theta divided by g. And this is the expression for range from equation three, u square sine two theta by g is nothing but range. So it is proved that r is equal to 4h by tan theta. This is another result which is very, very important.